call the meeting to order of the Finance Configuration Committee meeting on July 31st at 5.02 p.m. Uh, Lisa? Yeah. Yes. Oh, there you are. Okay. <laughs> you can hear us and you're with us. Yeah. Okay. So welcome, everybody. Thank you for being here. Uh, we're going to try to stay timely uh, today to respect everybody's time and being, being the summer. So we're going to jump right into a discussion. Oh, can people can't hear me? Okay. Can you hear me now? All right. Okay. So I'm going to stand up because we have a little, assuming I can get this out of here. And we're just going to get started and do a little framing of what we're going to be doing uh, today. And as we've been talking of, uh, about configuration as a committee, we've been keeping sort of the core of it or the heart of it is the school board is committed to supporting and ensuring high quality and rich in instruction for all students, right? And then uh, how do we, the configuration study is really how do we organize ourselves to implement that vision? We have seen that before. What we're doing today is that how do we engage our community has been one of our priorities, right? And the focus of our work, our community uh, transparency, what is the data telling us uh, sustainability and fiscal responsibility? We were just trying to create a vision for today. What, um, during this session, our primary focus will be analyzing data gathered through the forums, email, service, et cetera. We'll be working with Ginny, who's sitting right here next to Stephen, and she can introduce herself when she gets started. Uh, and we're going to be asking ourselves, what is the data telling us? Uh, we, will use, uh, we will use this to uh, add additional criteria. It, so that when we're looking at our options later on it, for configuration, it makes us it, it helps us make those decisions. Uh, we wanted to make clear that no decision has been made yet. Our focus today is just hearing community voice in the data that you have in front of you, and add, and like I said before, adding criteria so that we have the right information to make an informed decision as a board. And uh, you know, it's all in the best interest of our communities and our students. So. With that, I'm yeah, actually right. going to give it to Ginny to go through norms. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Uh, it's um, an honor to be here working with you again. Um, my name is Jeannie Phillips. I'm a senior associate at Great Schools Partnership, and um, Great Schools Partnership works uh, with districts and schools um, to um, make schools excellent places where um, students get high-quality education. And um, my job is to... Um, uh, hold the process for us to look at the data provided by your community. And so we're going to start um, with just the um, norms for equitable data analysis. And uh, those are on the back side of your agenda. You got these in your board packet as well. I'm just going to review them quickly in the interest of time. We have very limited time. Um, and so the first one is separate observation from inference. We're going to be looking at the data analysis, and I'm going to ask you in our rounds to be uh, very thoughtful about what you're observing in the data, what the facts the data say are, and then what the data suggests, those inferences that we're going to make when we analyze the data. Honor what's behind the data point. So these are the voices of your community members collected through focus groups and surveys and honoring their voices. We're gonna use the data to reflect and deepen our thinking about the process, the decision-making process we're going through. There are, you're gonna really see that there are multiple truths in the data. And I'm just gonna ask us to recognize that there are um, uh, many truths that your community has different perspectives. And we're gonna focus on a solution-oriented approach, not quick fixes. I'm going to ask you to keep the conversation blame-free, focus on what we can control and moving forward, and then strive for equity of voice. We're going to um, use a process so that we hear from everybody. I want you just to notice um, which one of these might be easy for you. Take a moment on your own to notice which one of these feels like, oh, that's easy. And take a moment to note which one's going to be hard. 
maybe even mark that one in some way or jot yourself a little note to remind yourself to lean into that, that you can do hard things. Oh my God. I wish we had time to discuss them, but I'm actually going to move us right into the protocol so we can spend most of our time analyzing the data. So in um, your packet, one in the board packet that you received last week, you received the raw data from surveys and from um, focus groups. Uh, it was like 60 pages of data. What you have today, and it looks like this, it says question one, question two, question three. Uh, all the way to question five, is the analyzed data. Brian Whitmer, the Director of um, Data and Evaluation at Great Schools Partnership, analyzed this data into themes to summarize it for you to make it a little bit more manageable. So that's what you have in front of you. And that's what we're gonna be using today. That's the data we're gonna use and analyze using this data protocol today. This data, the analysis of the data comes directly from the community data, from the community focus groups, and from the community survey, where people were asked these questions. Here are the priorities the finance committee identified. What would you add or change and why? What are some ideas for school configuration that could achieve those priorities? Be specific. What is exciting about this process? What are your fears about this process? And what questions do you have? Um, our focus question for this data protocol is given this data analysis, given this data, what criteria are necessary for the board to make an informed decision about configuration? Let me be clear about what I mean by criteria. The current criteria that the board has been using that the, the central office has gathered data on is um, listed on your agenda, allow class sizes that meet uh, EQS, education quality standards, and are sufficient to provide rich instruction, maintain full-time nursing and counseling, maintain or expand enrichment opportunities that are consistent across the system, music, art, world language, et cetera, and limit or eliminate shared positions across schools and very small FTE. So those are the current criteria. We're gonna use this data to decide if there are other criteria that we can send to the central office to collect further data for analyzing the options um, that you're gonna choose from. Does that make sense? That's our focus for this time, using this data to do that. And we're gonna do it uh, using a modified data-driven dialogue. So we're gonna, I'm gonna give you some time about 10 minutes, it's probably not gonna feel like enough. I'm sorry, I wish I had a, a time stopping machine that would give us more time, but we're gonna have 10 minutes to examine the data analysis quietly on your own. As you do that, there are two sheets in your packet, one for observations and one for inferences that you can use to make notes. Once you do that, I'm gonna put you into pairs to discuss briefly your observations, and then we're gonna share out some of those observations. What are some things we wanna highlight that we saw in the data? That's the just the facts section. Then we'll go through the same thing for inferences. What does the data suggest? What meaning are you making of the data? And then using those observations and inferences, we'll surface what implication, the implications, what criteria we think are necessary for further study. What questions do you have about the process? We can use either this data or the raw data, correct? Uh, you, yes, you can use the raw data. This is a summary of the raw data. It's a summary by one person. Sure. Yeah. I, I would not necessarily agree with some of that. I'm not trying to be argumentative. Yeah. I'm just saying my observations may come from the raw data. Yes, you can make observations from the raw data as well. Other questions about the process? I'm, go ahead. Less about the process, but more something I noted was that there's a repeat of data between pages 17 and 27. So oh, in the board pocket. In the packet, I just want, wanted people to be aware so that if they're like counting things or whatever, okay, there are themes that were repeated simply by copy paste. Okay. 
Thank you for pointing that out, Ursula. Any other questions before I give you time to look at the data analysis? And use your, don't forget about your uh, note catchers that help you um, record some observations and inferences as you go. I'm gonna set the timer for 10 minutes and invite you to, to look at the data. And while you may not need quiet think time, I imagine some people in the room do. So I'm gonna ask that we stay quiet during this time. For people online, For people online I, just I just posted the, the, data, the data so that you can, so that see, you can the, see the, the, the Google Doc we're looking at to besides what, what was posted on the packet. On the packet.
that's time. What I'd like you to do now is to pair up, uh, you're sort of divided into two, so you're going to pair up to your partner here and just take four minutes to share just your observations. Share what you see and see what rises up between the two of you, what you have in common, where you might be at odds and see what observations you made, just your observations, and then we'll share those out loud with the whole group. So you two, you two, you two, and you two. I was going out this way. Yes, so, right. What I had done that us right to yes. Right, exactly. Um, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. So it was five years ago. It was that. Okay. It was that. 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 It was you know, and we did yeah, hear from every community, yeah. and that also you know, bringing up about town town finances. I think that's a part of the puzzle. You know, somewhat with the select board, but that's part of the puzzle. We're not sure about the information about how we see it. I just need it. Yeah. yeah, and then time and also transparency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That came up a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I can't read it. Yeah. 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 Yeah
I mean, just there were a lot, a lot of comments. We were asking why why we didn't make costs a specific criteria. Mm. Great. Next group. Uh, let's go clockwise. <laughs> um, yeah, one observation. I think people, it seems clear, people want com complete information about mm -hmm. what, you know, the shape and nature of the district as it is and the shape and nature of the district as it would be. Great. Next, next group. I observed one community member who mentioned that they disagreed with the concept of the community of a school being the hub of the community because they are a childless family and they have not visited the school and that is not their experience. I can. Um, one observation was that while, you know, obviously there was one community with more um, sharing, it, I observed that all communities in Gate, you know, shared. There's at least something from every community. Great. Let's do another round. Thank you for sticking to observation. You're doing awesome. Let's do another round. There, there were a lot of very strong comments about the depth of identity with the town school and just you know identifying with the you know, the school with the community. Great. So, like contradictory opinions or contradictory statements? Is that what you mean? Just multiple truths? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everybody's from their own point of view. So, not negative. I'm not mean it negative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Multiple mm -hmm. truths of what they're seeing. Yeah. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Can I just take a minute to remind you to use your mic so that the folks online can hear you? That last one was consensus that everybody wants to ensure the well being of community, especially students. I observed a continued ask about transparency and more time. Great. We probably have time for one more round if we're, we stay brief. Um, let's see. Um, a great desire for more cost benefit analysis and specific financial detail. Um, about uh, what closures would mean and how, how much it costs to operate the school now. Desire for cost benefit analysis. And could you say the other part? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. More specific financial information. I think that along the lines of um, well being, I think that people they want to have more of a rich dialogue about the implications of the change, whether it be longer bus rides or merging different grades. They want to know what has happened before. And so this there can be a reasonable predictability of what the students will go through. 
more rich dialogue about the implications of change. And then one of the examples you got gave was the length of bus rides, for example. Great. There was, um, there to me, there was a lot of different ideas around configuration and solution thinking, um, so that even if they, uh, there were statements that were different than the ones that were out there, they stated them in ways of what about or how about. Great. Thank you all for your observations. We're going to move into our inferences round. And so these are, what does the data suggest? What's additional data you might need to understand? Um, what are some uh, um, ways that you're connecting different data points and making sense of them? What meaning are you making? So I'm going to give you again, I think those conversations with a thought partner were helpful. Am I right? So I'm going to give you, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna give you another um, three minutes to have a conversation uh, with your elbow partner, um, and then we'll surface those um, inferences. what I'm really looking for is that the board member from this is that needs for the financial data. That was one thing that many asked at the meeting. I guess I also would say that the people believe there's like shared objectives between mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the board. Yes, yes. And, and, yes. And, and yeah. Mr. didn't mm -hmm. in it's very creative. The same terms of like they identified yeah. objectives. Yeah. Right, right, uh, yeah, let's just. Yeah. 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 You've already wrapped up those conversations mostly, it seems. Um, let's share out some inferences. Again, I'm going to put seven minutes on the clock for that. Um, let's start at a different place. Or so let's start with your group. Um, what so does the data suggest? If we need some clarity of communication, there were a large number of questions about why we're even engaging in this process or where our data came from. Great, thank you. 
there were a great deal of questions about Right, but the yeah. question is about why we're engaging in the process and where our data is coming from. Okay. Okay. Um, the data suggests that the community is really interested in merger of Montclair. Thank you. Or exploring more earlier. Put a qualifier in there. There was also an implication that, that merging with Mont Killer would eliminate the need to close elementary schools. That conversation, we're going to add one to that, that people do not generally understand that the merger with other with any other district will take time. You would say that he's you're saying that people don't understand that it will take time. Great. Other um, inferences, what does the data suggest? We're gonna do another round. I was gonna say, I think people, people, people seem to see the costs more clearly presented than the benefits of the proposals that were put out there. Mm -hmm. Do you mean just fiscal costs or no, costs? No, all costs. Being emotional. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people have expressed a desire to um, access the empirical data. Some of the studies have already been underway, and I think some people have a lot of people have expressed wanting um, a credible kind of argument to any of the proposals, so they can better understand comprehensively what it would mean. Mm -hmm. There was a many statements of people understand not having the status quo, but what does that look like is going to take time. And when you say not having the status quo, like not staying with the status quo. Yeah, not having everything be identical. Doesn't mean necessarily closing places, but it's like, you know, we got to do things different. We need to do things differently. But what does that look like? And understanding there needs to be time to explore that. Great. Thank you. I think there was an understanding of the implication of the community not feeling listened to. Not listened to. Listened to. Yes. Thank you. We we talk about the data as a potential for educational improvements. It's part of oh, sorry. So the potential for educational improvements. There's some. Uh, uh, What's it called? Inference from from both sides that they do want better opportunities for their kids. Wait. 
I think we might be out of, I'm just gonna check our time real quick. Um, is there anything else that hasn't come up that you wanna make sure comes up in different inferences? Do you wanna do another quick round? We have about a minute. I guess one thing, Jeannie, that I think is worth stating is that people are defining uh, like educational equity in a lot of different ways, mm -hmm. and it means different things for different people. Or maybe they don't disagree with the definition of equity, but they see equity as a different type of equity as more important in this in this instance. Thank you. Anything else? There were, uh, there's concern about the impl implications to um, tax bases and people moving, you know, the viability of a community based on the schools. Can I add to hers? So I think it's related was the implication to um, property values if there's a yes. loss of the school. Great. Thank you for taking such care with the data um, to, uh, you know, really observe it and then draw inferences from it. I'm just going to review that really quickly before we move into what are the implications. And this is where we really come back to that focus question. I'm going to say it now. I'm going to say it again because it's important. Given this data, what criteria are necessary for the board to make an informed decision about configuration? And so um, your observations, just the facts, um, there was some observation that uh, why isn't cost a criteria? The community wants more complete information, both about what's the current steady state of the district and about the possibilities. One community member says the school isn't the center of the community, they're a childless family. All communities felt had input, they saw voices from all communities in the data. Uh, there were very strong comments about people identifying with their local community school. Um, there are multiple truths and different perspectives represented in the data. There's consensus that everybody wants to ensure the well being of the students and of the communities. Um, people ask for transparency and more time. There's a desire for a cost-benefit analysis um, and more specific financial information. Um, people want more rich dialogue about implications of change, such as the length of bus rides is one example. And there are different ideas about configuration that emerged in the data that the data, a lot of the responses were solution-oriented. Those were our observations, the ones that you raised. Inferences, we need clarity in our communication. Uh, the community is interested in exploring a merger with Montpelier, and some people in the data believe that um, that would eliminate the need to close schools. People may not understand the kind of time that that kind of merger would take. People see the costs, both financial or fiscal and the other costs, more clearly than the benefits as we're looking at configuration options. There's a desire to access empirical data. People want credible arguments with their proposals. Um, there's a general sense that there's an understanding that we can't stay with the status quo, but that we need time to explore how to do things differently. Um, the community didn't feel heard or listened to. There's a potential for educational improvements. People want more opportunities for our students, for our kids. Um, I'm going to hang this in a minute. Equity means different things for different people, and people are using different definitions of equity. And finally, there's concern about the implications regarding taxes, community viability, and property values. So given that, I'm going to give you just a couple minutes of think time on your own to think about what are, what are the implications and how might this lead to additional criteria that we can study as we're going through this decision-making process. And with that in mind, I'm going to just read our focus question again. Given this data and the sense we just made of it, what criteria are necessary for the board to make an informed decision about configuration?
Let me ask you, would you like some partner think time too, or would you like to move? Yes, okay, I'm seeing some nodding heads. So go ahead and have a conversation with your elbow partner. Um, I'll give you three minutes again to do that, and then we'll surface uh, those implications. I'm going to encourage you to wrap those conversations up in the next 20 seconds. Okay. I'm going to encourage us to do um, a couple of rounds, and then I'm going to open it up for people just to discuss. But let's do a couple of rounds and see what implications or what criteria emerge from your conversations, and then we can have a looser conversation. Does that work for folks? Okay, would somebody like to get us started with a round? Go ahead, yeah. Um, impact on students' well-being. Impact on students' well-being. Could I, could I just ask us, could I ask you to get a little more specific about how we might measure that? Or do, do you think that's something we figure out? It's okay. If, okay. I'm not sure that all the criteria we have now can be specifically measured. Yeah. I'm not sure that it's fair to ask it to be specifically measured. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you. Let's go clockwise again. Specific uh, criteria around cost. Thank you.
Yep. Is that overall cost, Zach, or do you mean every all costs or specific? Thing? Well, right. I mean, we've got, got a lot of costs spent on the costs, you know, on what would the cost savings be? So, okay, the savings. Okay. I just wasn't sure. You know what I mean? Thank you. It's helpful. The more specific we can get, the more they look like criteria. So, thank you. Well, I think that we could speak at the things that we've been trying to speak. So we, we could be more specific about, you know, having a larger sense of community, renaming our school, rebranding our schools, renaming our schools. If for a person, like you rightly pointed out, a person that didn't feel connected to the school, if that's if that specific for whichever that school is, that's a better use for the community, right? We're, it allows us to have that conversation. So we're keeping in mind a conversation that we're already having, which I have been having every the last four Mm -hmm. And then we're taking consideration. So can we have an identity both in the towns and then in the larger community that's the all of the towns together? That is a functional community, is that what you mean? Or whatever we're doing, how does that impact or help the community? I guess you know what we're hearing from the community, the help and the identity. So I think we can speak to that because that would be a way for us to just if we can speak to that, the community will process it and be able to vote whichever way yeah. they want to mm -hmm. vote in whichever position we want to put out. Yes. Yeah. Just a reminder that everybody online can hear you best when you oh, yeah. Yeah. We're getting feedback yeah. messages. Great. I think that um, perhaps formally adding part of the vision from tonight into the criteria of, of sustainability and fiscal responsibility. Sustainability and fiscal responsibility. Mm -hmm. Let's do one more round. You all are so kind at waiting until I've done scribing. Well, I think it's about the the cost uh, the cost comparisons. I mean, you, we need that detail around the cost. Is that just financial cost? Or um, my thinking is financial cost. Okay. Great. Yeah. Back and Chris, do you have another one? Well, I have this sort of turn into a criteria about that sort of the problem we're trying to solve. So I don't know if you wanted to do that. Oh, okay. So um, I think we should have a criteria that we have provided community members with enough specific information about uh, the options so that they will understand will, will feel that they've been heard and support a decision even if it's not the decision that they want may i have truly heard thank you <laughs> Pass. We got a pass. I have another one that's sort of tangentially related to the well-being and the community being heard, which is um, trying to be more specific in answering some of the pointed questions um, and some of answering that might be we have data that's inconclusive and that opens a larger dialogue um, mm -hmm. regarding this, the larger cost benefit analysis, not just from a fiscal perspective, mm -hmm. but from a well being perspective, mm -hmm. thinking about the whole and thinking about this as a merger rather than closures. Because that's really what is being proposed. Okay, so what I have so far is more specific answering questions and acknowledging when the data is inconclusive. And then I heard you say something about cost benefit analysis. 
Could you say the second part again? Looking at the cost benefit analysis from a well being perspective, looking at the criteria and how that fits into the criteria of um, expanding the enrichment opportunities for everyone. So, as we answer questions, coming back to the criteria and the focus that we're having to improve the quality of education for everyone. So I'm gonna, uh, did we go, did we go full for a full second round? Great, I'm gonna open it up for you to um, uh, have an open conversation for this last bit of time. Anything else that you wanna rise up? We have about five more minutes in this that you wanna rise up. So popcorn style instead of rounds. Does it have to fall under implications or can it just be thoughts? Your thoughts are likely implications of the conversation. So I think that's good. Okay, I guess in terms of criteria, because I feel like... It can be thoughts on the things that are here, yes. Okay. Yeah. Part of what we were being asked about too tonight was whether or not there's additional um, priorities, correct? What, were we being asked that? Criteria. Yeah, right. the criteria are the priorities, yeah. Right, right, okay. Mm -hmm. Because I, I'm, what's resonating right now with me are the, the, the number of times I read, how did you come up with these priorities? And, um, and, and so all of it is making me just realize it, the, the amount of time these things take and the way that we come to um, the aha moments of the different work that we're doing. Um, and so I'm saying a whole lot of nothing, but anyway, we put that up. No, that wasn't Just nothing. That yeah. And I, I, on that one, I think what I hear you saying, and tell me if I'm wrong, is that you're, you're really, how do we uh, communicate the process and the timeline of the work that we've been doing, right? right. Yes, and, yes, and and where is the space to hear uh, uh, changes on those priorities potentially, or adding to those priorities right. um, from from all from all that we've heard, which I know is partially what we're doing, but I also there's so much to be done. I don't know if it sugars off that way. Is where I'm struggling. Yeah, that's quite attention. Thank you for naming that. Yeah, Zach. It's came to me late, but I think given, given the interest in merging with Montpelier, we might want to consider a criteria around does this set up uh, set us up well to go into a conversation with other districts? This discussion or the result? Does this does the results of the configuration work to set us up? So I think one of the things that we should be, um, I'm sorry, one of the things that we should be also the criteria is what is the impact of, although Amelia, I like the idea of it being a merger versus a closure. Um, the implication though, is that there is going to be a closure to have the merger. Uh, and the significant impact that, potentially significant, significant impact that a closure will have on towns. Uh, we've really been student focused, which is what we should be, but students live in the town and the towns are the voters. And so I think we need to be uh, reaching out more and, and really considering what the potential impact is on the town, where there will be a school closed um, as part of any reconfiguration, because um, we've heard a lot of comments that that is really important to people. And if we're not really uh, going out addressing that in specifics, uh, we will. I think we're just having a hard time uh, to convince people because it's very personal. And uh, the, the comment you made about the, the towards the um, individual who's never been to the school because he doesn't have children um, is a valuable comment, um, but singular too, um, to be considered. But I think the just really focusing and, and 
hearing the towns that are most strongly implicated and what what the potential impacts are going to be for them. Because students are still going to live in the towns, and if the town is defined economically or socially, that has an impact on students' uh, well-being, uh, which then come to school or wherever they are. Uh, so I think that should be a criteria that we are getting all of, both of our hands around and really discussing um, directly. Yeah, good question. Sure. Could, could that be, that, that was from Michael, that was going to ask that question, so can you and identity? Instead of, like, this is a more broader kind of way to look at it. So, it, so you would be looking at you know, that what you were talking about is something that would consider, right? And, and certainly it can be in that category. Um, but there are negatives to this process. Well, I mean, you know, we, we have to. That doesn't mean by present, and I get it, doesn't mean that it's mm -hmm. not going to be that right. you're not going to see the loss. Right. That, right. That's why there's are Okay. Okay, so there's some time. I want to make space for any voices we haven't heard from in this open part of the conversation before we wrap up. So I was just going to mention that I think it was Daniel that brought up that people are seeing the costs, not just the fiscal ones, mm -hmm. but like the emotional, social costs of these instead of any potential benefits. And so I think that we need to be aware of how we are discussing it and how we are talking about it and making sure that we're presenting what some of the benefits are and i it's a second one i don't think we should be dismissive of voices that show up in fewer numbers it seems disgenuine to dismiss minority groups that may not be able to get a large group of people together to speak loudly any any last voices yeah just uh, following up on the the dialogue that Chris and Floor had, I think a lot of these criteria we we put down can be clear. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Synthesized, yes. A couple of criteria I'm realizing the question and the worry was brought up that those who might have long transportation rides are are um, either youngest Personally and uh, socioeconomically impacted. So I think we need a criteria to be sure that we're having a balance and an understanding of who's being expected for what length of rides um, as compared to what's happening now, too, so that what, what that looks like. Um, and can I add to that while you're thinking of the something else? Mm, yeah. We heard like people commented not just for our students, but the time it would like travel time for parents potentially to mm -hmm. interact with mm -hmm. schools. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's what it was. I think um it's really the clear more clarity uh that we can provide as to what those benefits are, the better off we'll all be served so that um, families and communities understand these are the changes, but the, these are the specifics of what the opportunities would be that we are would be increasing or providing. I think I heard very loud and clear some of the generic terms we're using, people are done with and want specifics. So I just want to respond um, and also add in, I think that um, when I framed it from a merger and not a closure, I mean, it's both, clearly it's both, and I don't want to minimize the concerns that people have. And so that's why I think it's really important to use empirical data to answer the questions. Um, one of the most common questions being, if we have sixth graders come into middle school, what are the developmental and well-being implications of that? When you look at bullying, when you look at adjustment, when you look at academic achievement. Um, and if you think about the history of middle school, it was created by somebody who suggested, and it started with grades five to eight. And there've been a lot of studies and some of the most prominent coming from Harvard to look at why do a lot of students struggle in middle school? So it's sort of this universal transitional rough time of year. And so the, the question was up for debate about a decade ago, should we do away with middle schools? And it was decidedly no, that's why we still have them, but it doesn't 
um, having them doesn't include the difficulty of the transition that's inherent. And that actually spans across grade levels. So when you look at seventh grader, so anyway, I don't want to go on a tangent, but looking at the data, I think will will shed light on the nuances to help people think about the larger picture because it's not just me and my family. It's not just my community. It's the, the system as a whole. So if we invest now for the purpose of sustainability and fiscal responsibility, we're building a stronger system that their kids that they want to protect and have a, as much opportunity are going to be benefiting from. And that's, I think, an important message to stick to when we are answering questions and taking the concerns seriously as well. Like we don't want to lose that vision as we um, empathize and are compassionate with people and dig more deeply into this, you know? Thank you. That's well past our time. <laughs> so I'm going to um, take just a couple minutes to First off, applaud you for really engaging those norms of equitable data analysis. I saw you actively doing that and for sticking with the protocol and just ask um, briefly, how did that protocol work? How did we do? How did that protocol work for us or not work for us? How did we do as a, as a, a community in engaging with the data in that way? I think it's a helpful framework that I, I didn't even know where to begin to dive into it. Um, it's just such a huge task too, that I also, it's now I'm getting these aha kind of thoughts. And so not sure what to do with it. Yes. Write them down, please. <laughs> yes. It's a, a huge task, a huge amount of data and a very limited period of time. Whether or not it, it did anything for what they heard. Um, because they've heard prior discussions by the board, yeah. um, either in, in groups or at the halls. And it might be interesting to open that up to say, what's the impact? Did this, did this help? Did this give any more information? Did it create a, a, a different type of uh, framework for go moving forward? Yeah, I leave that up to you. Yeah, when we move into the Well, that's the we can ask that question. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was a nice, it was nice to have a structure um, that helped to engage the thinking into so much information. But I have so many more questions now. I don't, I don't know. Any other comments? Yeah. I, I think there were sort of you know, definitely cases where I feel like sort of having a structure and then more ideas got out and then we didn't, didn't go down too many rabbit holes. I think there were all, I, I think there are also ways in which it sort of felt, you know, like we, we didn't have sort of a lot of back and forth on mm -hmm. certain topics. And I feel like that is all, that can also be important for getting to handle richness. I appreciate that. Topics. I appreciate that both of you, Zach. Thank you. Um, I'm always frustrated with protocols. I think it's a white supremacist construct. Mm. So <laughs> having to partake in it is always very difficult. Um, I also don't feel like I am walking away from this any closer <laughs> to where I'd like to be than we were beforehand. I think you did a wonderful job facilitating the protocol, <laughs> um, but I am still just as frustrated yeah. now as I was when I walked into the meeting. Um, and we've got 18 minutes to decide about, are we gonna bring other options forward, which I know is what, what part of what the community wanted from this. And I'm not sure if that conversation even happened yet. We've just talked about these things, which are important. And we're supposed to vote on something in September. <laughs> we only have a couple more meetings as a board. Like it, it just, I, I, I'm just as frustrated now. Mm -hmm. That's when we started. Into the room. Thank you for saying that. Thank you for sharing. I'm going to turn it over to Floor for next steps. I think that's a great segue to that next step. I I don't need to Oh, it's not working. Okay. Oh, I hear you. 
Okay. Sorry, everybody. I was just saying thank you, Jeannie, for facilitating. That was really helpful. Uh, as we move into the next steps, and uh, and we, we had put here three highlights. I, I hear you clearly. I was saying to to Natasha, the, the whole point of this meeting was to try to break it up a little bit so that we were able to do some uh, come up with some criteria that would help us analyze future options. I think that there is agreement that we need more uh, options, but we couldn't do everything in one meeting. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. What are our next steps? Do we need another meeting? Uh, I wanted to start first with three highlights before we move into that of what you guys, uh, this is, that's been our tradition in these meetings uh, that I, we can share because usually we have the board meeting right after, but this would help with the writing of an update too. So if you wanted to share one highlight, you know, we have four groups, so one highlight, or I can just tell you what I was seeing. What? Go ahead. Yeah. From from today that we will share with the board, right? We will share the criteria. We will share all of the documents, right? But we have typically done three things that we want to make sure that we don't forget to share with the board that are important. Uh, do anybody have anything to say? Establish criteria for options uh, for reconfiguration. Okay. Uh, would be one highlight that I think came out pretty strongly. It came out that we need criteria. Right. Well, it came. It, can I rephrase a little bit of that? So we 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 did this exercise with sharing criteria that we think is missing, and now we need a process to make sure that you know either synthesize um, that that great you know all of that because we are not going to add you know ten. So coming up with a process, have another meeting where we can come up with a process to feed just like we did the last time to. To put all the criteria together and say, you know, these are the ten criteria, you know, the five, the seven. I'm looking at Jeannie just like, you know, like so that so that that criteria fits still within our, you know, our structure must ensure high quality and enriching instruction for all our students, right? That's been sort of our umbrella for for this work. So group what we can, yeah, group um, but have specifics that then generate back information for the criteria. Okay, specifics, okay. Anything else? I think the, the cost modeling has mm -hmm. to be as detailed as we can possibly be. And I think the benefits modeling has to be as detailed as we can possibly be. And benefits, okay. You want to define what that means? Probably, but well, really, I, but I don't just financial cost. Yeah, because that was the we were mostly talking about financial cost, and then I was talking about uh, educational benefits. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we have the tension of the fact that that we don't. All of us are quite busy over the next month. However, this work is critical and and needs. Um, quick attention to it. And so there's that tension of people aren't available, but yet we need to put this definitely on a front burner along with all the other work that's happening. I don't know how to do that. So to me, that's a board. Even another front burner. But, well, then. <laughs> yeah, so we need more. Uh, okay. That is helpful. Uh, and and I'll have the notes from, from Lisa. Uh, moving to what, you know, Zach. oh, sorry, Zach, sorry. I think it's, pop trick. it's a little tangential, but I think it's worth it, you know, letting you know, speaking to the board about just how much support there was for looking at, you know, beyond, beyond this, looking at you know, doing something with Montpelier as well. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Then. Okay, try to stay on time. So uh, it's clear. Oh, go ahead. I'm just wondering if we can sort of adopt <laughs> formally or informally 
uh, the norms for equitable data analysis as we yeah. move forward to help us stay focused. Because as much as I also was feeling like we just we just need to have a conversation, like let's skip ahead from the format because the formatting forces us to kind of slow down at a time when we need to speed up. But I, I think that there are times when it can help us be efficient and communicate and articulate more clearly. Okay. Yeah, all right. So then it's clear that we need more time to, you know, we need another meeting to make sure that we can come up with before we meet with the board so that we can mm -hmm. propose, uh, you know, not tell them which is the criteria, but have a more clear document of what the criteria is going to be. And I, I see your frustration, Natasha, and I, you know, how I, I'm super sensitive to that, but I want to, I, I want to say something because I, I have spent a lot of time also trying to make sure that data protocols are not inherited, uh, racist or white supremacy. It, I think the data protocol itself can be if we don't address it, it going to the right populations, right? Usually what happens is that we do not get the data from minorities, for example. But so I don't want to spend, but I see you frustrated and I'm and I'm sorry. And I'm so if you can provide a solution to that frustration, you know, like how can we make it better? Because we're all in this together, right? So if something needs to be different, like by all means, we and we can spend time after the meeting if you want. It. I want to make sure that the public has time to 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 give their input to, but if there's something that we can do that we can do different, it just by, by all means, like, like just my, say it. My frustration is left about the protocol. I'm used to existing in a white supremacist world, so I will defer to that because that's what I have to do. Um, what I'm frustrated about is the time piece. Um, I'm frustrated because we had originally said we were going to be on the 17th. That was changed, even though a doodle poll was put out and the 17th was the date that was available. So that is a week and a half of time that we could have used, potentially had this be our second meeting. We're moving into August. We've got a board retreat on the 8th. We've got a board meeting on the 21st. When are we gonna make time to do this? And I brought this concern up back in June, May, May and June, about how rushed this is. That was, again, communicated through so many parts of the survey, that's where my frustration is coming from. Yeah, and, and I, I hear it. And that I, this has been a fair process. I don't think it's been made available to the community. I don't think it's really honestly taking into consideration or giving time to the concerns that have been brought to us or to give us time to develop additional options that are going to have the same kind of consideration put in that the other options were put in before we have to make a vote. That's why I'm frustrated. And uh, and I, I hear you. I apologize for the meeting on the 17. It was not just my schedule because I had already said that I was not going to be able to be there. There was there were multiple people sitting around this table that could not meet on the 17. That's what my email. It's a, on the 31st. We that that is what the email. I sent an e a pretty clear email that multiple people had scheduled conflicts and yeah, and we, we couldn't. Done a Google poll that that would be a date that we could meet. And the thirty first was the other date that had as many people in it, and that's why the thirty first was uh, the thirty first was picked. And and I heard from one person when I reached out to people. From Michaela was the only one that said that she couldn't that she couldn't meet. So I I own that. I I changed the meeting. We could not get enough uh, time with the data. We could not get the meeting properly. Warren and we do not have everybody for for that meeting, and it was important to have every you know as many of us for for that meeting, and it was a meeting that we couldn't have a, remotely because we felt like it you know to do the data analysis this works out better. So I I own that. So I apologize if that didn't work for it. I'm also so, wondering if McKaylin's email can be made part of the public record. Yeah, it would be part of the. Uh, she sent it to everybody, yeah. so it will be part of that. Sure. Uh, she she texted me, and and we have uh, we didn't have public comment when we sent the agenda out. We added public comment on Monday, uh, and it's printed in your agenda there. And then I lost track of where I should go. Oh, next next meeting date. So we need a next uh, meeting day between now and the twenty first, and we could now that we have the criteria, we could potentially do that meeting online to facilitate a faster. Meeting Zoom. of assume assume yeah assume meeting to facilitate a faster uh, 
meeting, we can send a, a doodle poll or you can tell me which dates. Go ahead, Natasha. Um, we have accommodated other people's vacations throughout the summer. I know I'm only one person. Um, I'm going to be not accessible for two weeks during the month of August. Um, we are down a person in Worcester. Multiple people on this board have asked for an additional meeting so we could appoint a third person from Worcester. I am concerned that whatever date we put on the table, I can't be there. I do not know if McKaylin can be there because she's not here today. And if neither of us can be there, then that means Worcester has no representation. Mm -hmm. So if we are making time for additional meetings, mm -hmm. I would like to make time for an additional meeting to get a third Worcester representative on the board who has been asking to be a part of the board since June 14th before we start scheduling additional meetings for this conversation. Because I would like to see the town of Worcester fully represented. So I got to say uh, that we have, a, you saw even Chani's email. I don't know if you saw that email from, do we have a process? We had to, we have two people interest. I have two letters of interest for that. For, for that. We said that we were going to interview in the, in the 21st when the whole board was present. We, the, the position for Worcester has been open for, for, for a while. So yeah so so it's so so it is not so now we can we can do an interview we can if if you want to do an interview sooner we would have to have a meeting of the board the work of this committee seemed to be the most important this is the finance and configuration committee right now through the summer we had scheduled and posted on on front porch forum i told every select board that what that's when we were doing it so we can okay we can change that process we would have to interview both people before before having the meeting and make the time for that which is really hard in the summer in the retreat um or most of the board members can be at the retreat Yes. Because I think having it. McKellen had to be at the retreat. Then, so again, we're only going to have one Worcester person at the retreat. If, 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 if we could start the retreat an hour early as a board meeting, conduct the interview, and appoint the Berlin member, uh, the, um, the Doty member, uh, from the two who are expressed interest, that would that would help immeasurably, I think. Um, and I think it's doable. We're talking about moving the meeting time back so i'll just um i'll send an email to both uh, people interested in the in the position and see if they're available okay. uh, to have an interview on that day and be part of the and if sure. they're both can do it then we will interview that day That'd be great. Thank you. okay and then just a clarification michaela can be at that meeting we we made the board meeting the the whole retreat around her schedule last summer this summer she had to change her schedule and that's why she was not going to be at the retreat and so you can talk to her she had to apologize for that so it's not like we were intentionally trying to not have Worcester representatives there so let's move into go ahead. I just need to clarify just just so we get this right um so we are saying that as a board retreat we are going to interview and um select the Worcester representative during that time because we'll need to warn that appropriately right. Right. I just want to make sure that I do that properly. I think start an hour earlier than what we, we can start at, it will start at we will do it at lunch. We can do oh, it an hour okay. earlier. We'll, we'll adjust yeah. the schedule to be able to accommodate right. that for for mm -hmm. um, but, yeah. but that's also checking to make sure that people yeah. are available. Several several people, including Natasha, has work uh, oh, before God. that meeting. So we can move it. And Stephen too, and I do too. And yeah. The business meeting at the end. Well, I think they, they want it to be so that they can be part of the retreat. Can they be part of the retreat if they haven't signed their... They just can't. Oh, yeah, they they just, can't. yeah, the, the retreat would be fine. Yeah, and the other thing is that, uh, yeah, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll figure, we'll figure that out. Okay. Right, I mean, yeah. Okay. So we're three minutes early to community input. That's amazing. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. And sorry, I got a little. Well, no, we're, that, we're but gonna have public comment. Right we're now. gonna have yeah. public comment right now. I'm just saying just thank you for the work. Right now, we're gonna open it to public comment. We have one person with us in person, so if you wanna come forward uh, and introduce yourself, that'd be that'd be great. And there's some mic the right there. Where there's this one. And then I'll move to people online. Oh, I just realized I'm not sitting in my room. Oh, you can. That's dangerous. No, I'll just sit. It's okay. Yes. Hello. My name is Katrina Kilpatrick, and I sent you all a letter 
but I thought I would come and read it in person because that's always nicer. Not for me, because I'm super nervous. No. Dear members of the board, I am reaching out as both a parent and a paraeducator in our district. I realize there is an issue with funding for many schools in our state and districts are looking to provide answers to these issues. But I am concerned about an aspect of the proposed consolidation plan for our schools. I am the parent of a fifth grader and the idea of my child, as well as the rest of their class, moving to sixth grade at U32 is unsettling. This age group was in kindergarten when COVID ended their in-school learning early. Kindergarten is when kids really get into the swing of school, making friends and learning to share and be part of a larger group. Please bear in mind, this was the first year of school for many kids. When they came back to in-school for the first grade, they had to remain in their bubble and were not able to have lunch in the cafeteria or even be in the same area of the playground as other classes. They were not allowed to share markers, pencils, books, anything. The second grade year was better, but now they had to learn how to socialize and share all over again. They really lost a couple of school years to COVID. Now fast forward to the incoming fifth grade class. I have worked in this room and I know these kids pretty well, and I cannot picture them being ready for that next step within a year. These are kids who need snacks, regular breaks, and the consistency of one teacher in one room with them for the entirety of the day. I realize the plan to move, to move sixth grade to U32 has been tossed around for some time, but it feels like it is being rushed now. I also wonder if any board members have been to the schools to view this particular group of kids. Have you spoken to their teachers to get a full feel for this group's maturity level? This group needs to have that big kid on the block feeling they get from sixth grade at the elementary level to give them confidence and to help them grow. This is an invaluable step before moving to U32. Additionally, I have been reading articles about whether it is better to have sixth grade in the elementary or middle school setting. What I have learned is standardized test scores are higher for sixth grade students in elementary and there are more behavioral issues with this age group in a middle school setting and those behaviors follow students through eighth and ninth grade. These disciplinary problems correspond with low academic achievement. In one instance I read about, sixth graders who were moved from middle school to elementary just before the start of the year were initially disappointed. After they completed their sixth grade year, most were glad they had one more year in elementary school. With all the pressures and challenges which accompany moving on to middle school, along with the stresses these students have faced in the wake of the COVID pandemic, I ask you to consider a resolution which does not move this age group. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Right, we have two hands online to see. Alan, you're first. <laughs> Sorry, it's Lila, not oh, Alan. Lila. Sorry, I was seeing Alan on the No, no, we're both, we're both there. We tried to put both names so we would be listed on the meeting notes. Um, I just have a an observation about this meeting and about the process, um, which is that I heard a lot of acknowledgement that there were a lot of questions that the uh, community had raised, both at the meetings, the forums, and in the survey. Uh, the board specifically asked what questions people had, and I'm not hearing any discussion of how these questions are going to be answered, which is a concern. Um, any timeline for answering the questions? I think that um, a lot of people in the community, as everyone has mentioned, would like to see a lot more financial information explaining what the cost savings would be and, and cost savings of uh, consolidation um, compared to the additional expenses of transportation and enrichment, uh, because there's a lot of concern that um, if there are overall savings, they're quite small. This may or may not be true, but I think the board really needs to answer the questions that the community raised in the survey. I know I personally spent quite a lot of time asking specific questions and I'm hearing no indication that those are gonna be answered in a you know a timely way. Uh, one specific thing that um, I don't see mentioned um, that, that was 
uh, suggested by several people as an option is to look at Act 168 and the um, possibilities that might um, exist under that. And I'm not sure whether you know, the board has even thought about that, um, but I think uh, a number of people raised that. It was a different issue than merger with Montpelier. So, um, and I guess my final comment is, I appreciate having the public comment. Um, I just want to emphasize this is a public meeting and there should always be public comment under the open meeting law. It shouldn't have to be added as a last minute um, change to the agenda. So thanks. Thank you. Ruben? There we go. Sorry, it took me a second to operate my mic. Um, uh, first, I want to acknowledge that that this is incredibly hard work for all of you. Um, and you've been tasked with an impossible task, which is to make sense of an absolute tidal wave of data and observations that came out of these community meetings. I was sort of scrolling down through them and um, and trying to make sense of the amount of comments um, is incredibly challenging because when you have a whole bunch of comments like these, then our own biases tend to float to the surface and we scroll down through and we sort of see the ones that, that we align with and they tend to carry a little more weight. So, um, I, I really appreciate the framework that you guys put in place for this meeting today, because I think um, at a minimum, it will surface those biases and not taking a lot of action, I think gives room for everybody to chew on, mentally chew on the things that sort of floated to the surface for, for each of you in this process tonight. Um, I, I I really, this is a really difficult task. I, I don't think there's, there's, there's a complex problem with no simple solution. Um, and uh, making some space for you as a committee and the broader board to really wrestle with the implications and all of the facets of these decisions, I think is the right thing to do. Um, Natasha, to your point, this is an impossible task with an impossible timeline. Um, and you might, as a group, come away and say, I, I don't know what. Um, <laughs> but I, I appreciate you giving yourselves the space to do this in a thoughtful way. Um, and hearing the comments that sort of bubbled to the top around the, the tables here, um, what I, I just really wanted to appreciate those uh, because they reflected what I was hearing in the community forum that I attended. Um, so I don't have any guidance or opinions to share. Um, I, I, this is a really difficult uh, task for all of you. So I will just say thank you. Thank you, Ruben. Are there any, any other members of the public we also have some board members in the screen that I said to you, you could participate at the end if you want it. Okay. I'm not seeing any other hands. Okay. Any other comments from board members? Otherwise, go ahead, Zach. I, I noticed a real lack of any support for the option of turning um, Berlin into an early childhood center. Given that we are going to be asking the administration to do a bunch of work on modeling, do we do, do, do we want to add, you know, you, you sort of go forward with that, asking for the models on that, or or do we want to you know, reconsider that? So I, don't think, that, that. I don't think that you all have the capacity to do the modeling either because that's really external to yeah I, I mean I yes I would agree with that because it really lessens the load on that part of the work yeah. I think the substitute for that is something that we need to talk about at the retreat is what are some of those other options because we are going to talk about some of the configuration work as we talk about our goals and all of that 
Um, so there could be some other options. And as opposed to, to spending our time on something that really did not gain hardly any comments whatsoever, um, I, I mean, we can put our efforts towards getting data around these other areas or trying to find other ways to, to give you information. So I, I would also add that we've had some initial analysis around the transportation for that scenario, yeah. and it would lengthen the preschool time on buses far beyond what they're supposed to be on the bus. Yeah. And so that presents a very big issue. It's mm -hmm. almost a non-starter if we just throw transportation. Transportation, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And just to clarify what Stephen just said, we we're not gonna have we're not gonna do the configuration at our retreat. Mm -hmm. We're gonna schedule just because I don't, we're in we're, we're we're gonna look at our work plan. We're gonna schedule the next steps. We're gonna talk about you know how you're. Just, I just want to make sure the configuration conversation is you know is that transparency is happening in the public and is happening yes. here at board meetings. What we're doing is talking about our scheduling, our goals, our community engagement, that kind of timelines, timeframes. Sorry, no, it's it, it's, it's good. I just want to make I just want to make sure that. It doesn't take it they get taken out of context, and suddenly it's like you're gonna. <laughs> no, you're doing great. Okay. So, is there a consensus that we, the Berlin configuration is not really an option? Yeah, and I think I think the board will make that decision. I think we could recommend that to the board as a configuration committee when we're. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. I think we have some other data that we can pull together in the meantime. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for your time. I'll be looking for a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Chris. Second by Zach. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Okay. All right.